the myth of environmentalists is the proposition that a path to the cancellation of human activity exists. But the idea that we can eliminate industry and stop supplying human beings with goods and services is simply a path to the ever-expanding market of so-called environmentally friendly gadgets. Environmentalism was not created in a vacuum, it was pushed back against the capitalist's myth that every want devised by man can be profited from. The difference between capitalism and communism is their power centers. Capitalism unleashes the avarice of individuals as a vehicle for the provisioning of wants. Socialists use the lawmaking power of governments to direct the process. But both systems require someone to have authority over physical property. Capitalists use the power of private ownership and communists the power of legal rights to control the use of the natural world. Environmentalists attempt to control the use of the natural world by implementing a doctrine of natural rights. Ultimately, they want the state to make laws that put the protection of the planet ahead of human rights. People are to own only environmentally friendly products. Capitalism, communism and environmentalism are religions in competition with one another. Religions create meta-law or law that governs all other law. Religions exist as a constitution that govern what sort of law can be created. Religion is a way to give human beings the highest seat of power. Religions all believe physical property is the source of all power. Religions are not concerned with providing for general wants, they focus on funding the seat of power. The only thing religions truly want is greater power over more property. The legal system always centralizes power by centralizing the control of property. This trend is visible in the environmentalist movement. The environmentalist movement is religion as is capitalism, communism. They are more effective than the conventional religions because their control of property is more effective. A priori and empiricists look at the Bible's solution to the provisioning of wants as the natural way things ought to work. The Bible has the only information on living without religion. Scripture does not result in regulatory activity. Christianity does not centralize power in human hands nor concentrates property in fewer and fewer hands. Christianity does not lead to globalism. There is only the natural order and human law. The latter which is the basis of all religions. There are two methods of organizing human beings. These two methods are empirical and legal. In practice they produce either the church or legal systems. There are only two options when it comes to administrating human activity. There is the Babylonian system of law-based religion and the biblical church. The Babylonian religious system, BRS, is based on the state as the lawgiver and regulator. But the intent of the law and the concentration of wealth and power is to create a one-world, global religion. The state serves as a silent partner in all transactions and business establishments. The state is a silent partner exists as a liability in every commercial operation. The state exists as a lien holder against all property regulated by the jurisdictional authority of the state. As a part owner, the state levies a charge against all property and transactions. Taxes are the owner's capital draw done as exercised by the state. A priorian predicts the Babylonian system and religion, in all of its guises, will exhibit instability and engage in wasteful processes. Systems governed by human law are by definition not governed empirically, empiricism is not dictatorial. Attempting to govern any system from the top down, using a rigid command structure and laws, creates redundancies and multiplies costs. We see this waste of resources in communism, but the West cannot extrapolate these observations to capitalism. The key to the success of any venture is determined by its accounting system. The feature every civilization requires is accountability. There is empirical accountability and legal accountability. Babylon utilizes a legal accountability. One must answer to the person above them. 
Empirical accountability requires objective data. Empirical accountability requires a way for accounts to be reconciled. If there is no empirical accountability there is risk and with risk comes fear of defaults. But the deeper issue of accountability requires we ask if we owe only what the law requires from us, or is there a deeper kind of accountability that supersedes the law? A note on nature. Culture is the sum total of all activity performed by human beings. Culture is the net value of the work done. If life was a bank and our work the deposits we made, then culture is mankind's bank balance after the cost of the party has been deducted. This is why it is of vital importance to reduce social costs. Social costs are liabilities or indirect expenditures. In simple language social costs are expenses that do not produce income and cannot be considered investments. If it cannot be mathematically or empirically justified, it is a liability. Coherency is a condition of mathematics and consistency a feature of nature. Claims about nature must be consistent with logical thought. Descriptions of nature must be mathematically coherent. It is not natural to assume nature is able to transcend itself. Autogenesis is not consistent with the processes of nature. The only logically coherent assumption is that nature initially had zero existence. In the beginning there was no beginning. A beginning must be attributed to nature. There can be no beginning in nature, without nature. All natural beginnings assume nature. Without nature there cannot be any feature or factor that assumes the essential substance of the natural order of things. Nature by its own internal need for coherence has to be of one substance. If nature is caused, then it is caused by a substance that operates beyond the natural laws of nature. That which creates nature is superior to nature, because it is sufficient to create nature. Nature is orderly because it is governed by law. Law is inferior to morality, as flesh is inferior to spirit. When nature was created it was created inferior to that which created it. When God created those things that are natural, He created the law because what He created was created in an orderly way. The perception of order is the perception of law. The law of nature is inherent in nature, the laws of man are imposed upon that which is natural. The logical framework of nature the dimensions of time and space. But space and time are not physical. There is no objective space or quality known as time. Time and space are not absolutes, which universals would have to be if they are not conceptual. Reality would need to be an absolute if it were not a created abstraction of God. Man can create time and space in his stories. He can give and take life. If his characters do not act logically or consistent with the characterization, we consider the writer a hack. If the character takes on a life of their own, then we know the writer understands the logic of life and how people act. Everything is consistent with its own nature. Life is defined by and determined by the logic of its existence. We are perfected in whom we are. We cannot be other than who we are. We cannot be perfect in any way but in our own logical preconditions. The natural order is the way things are defined. Understanding the order of nature is to understand the meaning of things. We cannot understand what we cannot define. Everything has meaning. All we can do as human beings is to seek diligently the meaning of things. When we think of a nation we may think of borders and geography. But this is not a nation and borders can change. Some say land belongs to the finder, but this is a secularist philosophy. Seeing giving ownership is akin to witchcraft. Why would seeing something give one a claim to it? If being the first to find an island gives you a claim to it, what if someone found it before you did but died? Do his descendants have the first right to it? But what is a right without the power to defend it? The right to a land you cannot defend, is on par with the right to fly, without having wings. But if rights are dependent on the physical prowess of individuals, 
it brings into question the right itself. If all we are talking about is the ability and willingness to kill the opposition, when we discuss rights, we are not engaging in a discussion about rights in the abstract, but about legal rights because law is founded on the exercise of physical force. The natural order is the only source of rights. Living within the natural order gives us the most power. No human has a claim on anything created by anyone else. If we reject this claim, we lose all rights to anything we created, only parasites would dare deny all ownership claims. We have a right to what we create, but for autocrats this is a problem. Humans did not create the natural world, and nature cannot create itself. Even if you do not believe in God, you know mankind did not create anything physical. Because autocrats think the natural world exists without an owner and there is no natural way to apportion it, autocrats assume the right but their decisions cannot be implemented without resorting to physically defeating anyone who opposes the sharing. Conclusion Those who believe in a free nature must resort to autocracy to enable the sharing of the world's resources. Religion is a general term for the regulatory framework within which autocrats attempt to divide up the earth, or their portion of it. Despite this is not the usual way of thinking about religions or legal systems there is no way to separate the two. All religions seek to control behavior by means of regulations and all legal systems seek to capture the minds of their adherents and regulate if not ritualized behavior. This is not an ideologically motivated conclusion. It is meant to simplify the issue and focus our attention. We can pick a regulatory system to pursue or the alternative to religion, which is empiricism. Empiricism does not base its findings on peer pressure, mob rule or even majority opinion. Empiricism is grounded in the truth and the faith that truth exists. However, we need to take science out of the laboratory and bring it into the operation of our communities. Life must be seen as an ongoing experiment with test group and the control group. The control group lives as it always has. The test group must live empirically, according to the evidence. The key element in any empirical test is quantification. The verification of an empirical finding is only as good as the quantities are objectively determined. But there is a path to this level of objectivity found in the test group's monetary unit. We cannot own what we did not create. We own only the value added to assets. This position concurs with the doctrine called the labor theory of value. By transferring ownership to the experiment, the test group is able to compensate participants for the value added to the assets being utilized in the experiment. The value added to assets objectively determines the performance of the test community. Thus, the essential requirement to create an experiment to test empiricism against religion, or objective standards against the regulatory apparatus of autocrats, is proved possible. A quantifiable standard by which religion and empiricism can be compared is possible.